Thank you. Uh, Bloomberg Intelligence is Bloomberg's investment research arm. With 300 uh, research professionals uh, following 140 companies globally. Uh, we have 2,000 of the world's most important companies under coverage. Uh, for the past several years, we've been working in conjunction with Business Week to identify 50 companies to watch. Uh, it's been a very exciting program that we've worked on, and, uh, and, and our analysts enjoy doing it. I'm going to mention five companies today, and one of the things I would point out uh, with these companies is as we go through this process, every year we start to identify some really important themes uh, that we notice uh, that affect the world and affect the companies that we've identified as the 50 companies to watch. Uh, you know, for instance, uh, some of those themes are obviously internet disruptions, a huge theme year in and year out. Internet of Things is going to be a growing theme in terms of how it affects business efficiency. Real estate overcapacity is something that's increasingly important to us in looking at other companies we cover. Uh, always emerging markets, uh, energy transition from old energy to new energy sources, and then just really identifying who are the dominant players in each of the businesses that we follow. I'm also going to finish in this last column the one theme that we identified this year, which was sort of the super theme of everything we talked about, is 5G. And I want to talk a little bit about that. Now let's jump into the companies. Um, Indigo uh, is a company covered uh, by Raul Kapoor, our transportation analyst in Asia. He thinks this is a dominant airline in a massive emerging market of India. I would point out that India, as we know, is going to be a country that is, is, is likely to eclipse the population of China in the next decade. And interestingly enough, we're looking for 20% per year growth in capacity with, with uh, air traffic volume in, in India, so huge. This top chart is really interesting. Indigo is 43% of that market, three times the size of the next largest competitor, with minimal debt versus many of its competitors. Uh, I'd also point out that they uh, have adopted a strategy of other successful uh, airline companies where they focus only on the Airbus 320. It gives them a great deal of efficiency, and this bottom chart shows 25 to 30 percent lower cost um, per, per uh, seat kilometer uh, than its major competitors. I'd say the catalyst for this company in the next uh, couple, in, in 2019, oil, which was a problem in the middle of the year, is obviously going the other direction, and capacity, they've got a big capacity expansion this year, which will continue to focus their dominance, 25 to 30 percent. Valuation, 16 times earnings, 25 percent below that of the overall India market. Let's move on to retailing in Europe. Sue Munden, our European property analyst, has identified Hammerson, a, a real estate owner of, 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 uh, of retail, uh, as a survivor of the internet. Um, if you look at you know, what's going on in, 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 the, uh, in the company, uh, they are an owner of flagship malls, mostly in the UK, but also in, in continental Europe as well. And they really are starting to show uh, a, a focus on being a winner. We think in 2019 uh, that they're going to be continuing to divest their lower uh, profitability uh, retail parks, which are shown in the upper graph. The pink line is the weaker performance of the retail parks versus their flagship malls. And, and our guess is uh, that that money will be redeployed, that capital will be redeployed into paying down debt and buying back stock. Uh, again, her big focus is the internet is starting to differentiate itself in terms of retailers that are going to be survivors and retailers that are not going to be survivors. And that's true with the property that those retailers, uh, those retailers use. Uh, from a valuation perspective, uh, this stock has seen net asset value increase consistently for the last five years, and yet the stock price has had this overhang of being an internet threat. Uh, yet its uh, net asset value is now at 50%. Or it's, it's, it's uh, valued at 50% of its net asset value with a high 6% dividend yield. Staying on the retail topic and focusing on one uh, in Japan specifically, which we think is interesting, uh, fast retailing, Uniglow is a company we think is, is in a category of fast fashion uh, that is going to be a strong uh, survivor uh, in the retail industry and in the internet world. Tom Jastrop, our, our uh, Asian Retail analyst really thinks this company is an interesting company. Fast fashion, uh, the leading player is Zara, followed by 
H&M in Europe, and then uh, Uniglo in, in Japan and broadening out from there. But what's interesting about, uh, fast fashion, about fast retailing is that it is still at the core a supply chain automation company that is, enables it to provide very high quality products at low prices and very fast product cycle turns. Uh, and that is really what differentiates the fast fashion industry. The, um, and, and with their own unique uh, focus on uh, performance and athletic wear. Uh, we think the catalyst in this particular company is if you look at the top, it is a well diversified global company. But importantly, at the bottom chart, uh, it shows how well their international operations are growing. We think this is the catalyst in this story. In 2019, uh, non Japanese profits will exceed 50% for Uniglo. We think that's an important milestone for the company. Uh, at a valuation perspective, this is not a cheap stock, 33 times earnings, but uh, our analyst believes that with strong double-digit growth for the foreseeable future, uh, that the, the valuation makes sense. Moving on to uh, energy, uh, Chenier is uh, Mark Rosano's stock for the LNG market uh, and really the player in the U.S. LNG space. Uh, we obviously all know that demand for LNG is going to be very, very important uh, for the foreseeable future as a transitional fuel, and that the U.S. has incredible shale resources that uh, needs to get out of the U.S., and that Chenier is really the best play on that. You can see in this top chart uh, the cost of some of their plants are very, very low versus uh, many of its worldwide competitors. So it's in a really unique position. The catalyst for Chenier going forward is that they've got three new lines coming on in 2019 ahead of schedule, which is going to drive enormous uh, cash flow opportunities for the company, uh, and in particularly to, uh, to really access a very attractive spot markets. So we see strong cash flow through 2025, particularly notable in 2019, and we see 2019, the first year the company is going to generate free cash flow. Uh, very important because we think that will allow them to start paying down debt and maybe even uh, deliver a dividend. Finally, NXP, um, our credit analyst Rob Schiffman and uh, Anna Schoenvonson, our semiconductor analyst, think this is an interesting play on autos and industrials. Large company, 40 billion plus in U.S. market cap. Uh, the um, company is really uh, 50, per, as you can see in the top chart, more than 50% of its business is in automotive and industrial semiconductors. The uh, chart to the right shows that automotive and industrial semiconductors are really some of the strongest parts of the semiconductor uh, market with 10% plus uh, growth. So very, very attractive end market, stable business. What they really like is that this company is focused on delivering shareholder value, have started buying back stock, $5 billion in share buybacks in the last, uh, last year, and in fact, we note that just recently, Moody's, in spite of a $5 billion share buyback, just upgraded the stock to investment grade, which is a big milestone. We expect continued share buybacks, maybe as much as 10% uh, in the next year or two. Lastly, I want to talk about 5G, which, as I mentioned, I wanted to end on one theme that really sort of was important over and over again in all these discussions as we identified the 50 companies to watch. You know, 5G, in terms of its capabilities, is just dramatic. We think this is a decade-long theme that is going to be critical for the worldwide economy. It's going to change business dynamics from industry to industry and company to company. Some people will be helped. Some people will be hurt. You know, things like 10 to 100 times faster download speeds, uh, 5 to 10 times better latency, which is your back-and-forth connection between you and your service provider, three times more efficient use of the spectrum. And then, most importantly, at the end, 300 times more simultaneous connections per cell tower than we currently have with 4G. These are huge, huge technological adva advancements. Now, here's what's important, is that this is going to go on for a long time. Not only do you have a long implementation, but then you have to have the worldwide economy learn how to use this faster technology. So I use the U.S. as an example. Verizon and AT&T are, are, are are, are testing the technology this year. They will be de deploying to small groups of customers in 2019. Other countries uh, that are also deploying in 2019 are 
Japan, South Korea, and China. In fact, we think there will be a lot of competition between countries to see who can deploy 5G the fastest. But importantly to notice, as you looking at the U.S. as an example, in 2022, we only expect 20% of the U.S. population to have 5G access. So that just stresses the point that this is going to take a long time to roll out, and so this will be something that we'll be looking for the impact in many, many years to come in the next decade. You know, who benefits from 5G? Uh, obviously, uh, there's some normal people you'd expect, carriers, handset manufacturers, tower companies, equipment companies. We talk about all the technology behind all of these companies and where they're going to benefit. But the thing I would want to end this discussion on is really the worldwide economy. We think that 5G is going to dramatically change business dynamics, industry by industry, company by company. And we think that over the next five years, as we continue to do more year-ahead uh, editions of Business Week, as we identify 50 companies to watch each year, that many of the companies that we identify will be either winners and losers because of 5G. Thank you.